it's Writing Wednesday again and it's been a couple of weeks since I've been here with a Writing Wednesday video because I've been taking an Easter break from work and I guess kind of a break from vlogging as well. I'm going to be back with some book reviews this week. It's been a while since I've done book reviews since I did my top books of last year. Last year I was trying to do a book review vlog uh, summarizing what I'd read every month. That turned out to be a bit much to keep up with so somewhere between the once a year and once a month I'm kind of trying to do it once a season maybe so I'm going to tell you about I'm not going to try to hit every single one of them but at least some of the highlights of the books that I've read over the winter and spring from January to April. And once again, there'll be a chance to win a book, so keep watching. So one of the things I've done this winter is read a lot of Newfoundland fiction. Uh, I read a big stack, and I'm not going to tell you about every book I read. I'm just going to hit three favorites, three highlights. I'm not usually a person for short stories, but these are two great short story collections. Whirl Away by Russell Wangerski and Strays by Ed Kavanaugh. They are both award-winning writers, and deservedly so. And although I'm not normally a short story fan, both of these collections really had me hooked. Also, Chad Pelley's second novel, Every Little Thing, I found this a real page turner. I got completely drawn into the story, really wanted to know what happened. It's one of these stories that kind of starts near the end and the suspense is how did we get to this point? And uh, when a completely unlikely person is in jail at the beginning of the story, you really want to know what happened in this guy's life to lead him there. And this is the story of that. I found it really engaging. So some really good historical fiction, Hilled by Nicola Griffith. Uh, 7th century Britain, extremely, extremely good job of creating a world that is so different from our own. Took me a while to get into, but fascinating book, and I'm looking forward to the sequel, or sequels. Two more really good historical fiction reads by two of my favorite authors. Sharon K. Penman, A King's Ransom, wraps up the story of Richard the Lionheart and the rest of his ill-fated family. And The Shadow Queen by Canadian author Sandra Gulland is another foray into 17th century France and the Court of the Sun King. Two works that take us into 20th century North America, The Twelve Tribes of Hattie by Ayanna Mathis and The Imposter Bride by Nancy Richler. Um, one in the U.S., one in Canada, one the African American experience, the other a Jewish immigrant experience. Both really good, richly detailed, but something in the plotting of both of them kind of left me wanting more, and not necessarily in the good way. I enjoyed them, but I wasn't fully satisfied by them. Finally, the absolute best work of historical fiction I've read so far this year, and probably one of the most best books all told, Emma Donahue's Frog Music. Fantastic glimpse into the underworld of 1870s San Francisco based on a real-life murder case, and absolutely fascinating. Okay, best work of young adult fiction, definitely Rainbow Rowell's Fangirl, which I read along with my daughter Emma, and we both loved it. Really, really good story with great characters. In the category of stories of the not quite real, I guess, I finally caught up with Karen Thompson Walker's The Age of Miracles, which a lot of people have recommended to me. It's a bit dystopian. It starts in the very everyday world, but quickly becomes un-everyday. And it is very good, but I also found it a little bit creepy and disturbing. Not necessarily in a bad way. Neil Gaiman. Ocean at the End of the Lane can only be described as a modern day fairy tale. Very haunting, very beautiful, really lingered with me for a while. Also in the fantasy category, I wanted to show you a copy of my good friend Carrie Schaefer's new book, Wake World, but unfortunately I read it as an ebook and it's sold out here at the bookstore, which I guess is a good thing, but it's a sequel to her previous novel, Between, and a great installment in a great new fantasy series. In more realistic fiction, Louise Erdrich's Roundhouse, set as so many of her books are, on a native reserve in the United States, and a story of a crime that tears apart a family and threatens a community. And finally, another story of not exactly a crime, but certainly a very unfortunate incident that's devastating to the family at the heart of the story. Rachel Joyce is perfect, tells two parallel stories 40 years apart, and then bring them, brings them together in kind of an unexpected way, and I really love this. Finally, the nonfiction. Um, Alexandra Horowitz's On Looking is a book about urban walking and taking walks with experts in different fields to see what you're not seeing when you're going for a walk, so I really like that. Barbara Ehrenreich's Living with a Wild God. Not exactly a memoir, and I found it in the religion section, but it's not exactly about religion either. It's more about an atheist trying to come to terms with a spiritual experience. Very interesting, worth the read. Speaking of spiritual experiences, a great memoir by Addie Zierman, When We Were on Fire, about growing up evangelical in the 90s and uh, finding her way through that and past that to, I guess, a more mature adult faith. 
and a book I would like to be able to show you but can't find a copy of uh, in hard copy because I read it as an e-book, Sarah Miles, City of God. Really, really love that. Sarah Miles is one of my favorite writers. I recommend checking her out. Finally, a memoir I really enjoyed, Piper Kerman's Orange is the New Black. Yes, it's the book that the TV series is based on, but it's very, very different. So you can read the book without getting spoilers for the TV series or vice versa because the kernel of the story is the same, but much of it is very different. Great story. So those are most of the books, at least the greatest hits, if you will, of what I read from January to April of 2014. And you know how this works now. I want to give away a copy of one of those books to one lucky viewer. So if you like or comment on this on YouTube, or you share it on Facebook, or retweet it on Twitter, or do anything to get other people watching these book reviews, then I will put your name in a drawing, and I'll let you know next week who the winner is. And next week, I'll be back with another Writing Wednesday to talk about the writing process.